from Publianas Kids Place. I'm on location in Daytona Beach, Florida with actor and author John Corbis. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Great. Thanks for having me. So now, you've had a lot of like a different life than most kids because you were a child actor uh, to me on the famous last year show um, from 1957 to 1964. Does that, um, it doesn't get much cooler than that. Um, for seven years you co-starred with the most beloved icon um, of all time. What was that? It was great. Something to be very proud of. the series, the show was on in over 120 countries, and as we speak, it is on now still in over 50 countries. So, uh, it, was, yeah, it, was, it was a great thing. Okay, so um, kids have all kinds of obstacles growing up. Did you have any obstacles um, to deal with, and how did you deal with them? Well, you know, I started acting when I was not quite three years old. Uh, I started Lassie when I was seven, but by that time I had already been in ten movies and even simply live television. Um, the obstacles, uh, you know, we all have obstacles and bumps in the road in our lives. Um, I think probably the hardest part for me when I was doing the series as a young, a young boy would be that I really didn't have a lot of uh, anonymity. I, if I was to go, over, say, to a matinee on a weekend with my buddies, um, all the other kids that were at, at the matinees, you know, would, would look and they would see and say, oh, look, it's Timmy, it's John Lovitz from Lassie. So you know, it was kind of hard for me to just to blend in and, and, uh, and just kind of be a regular person. So um, after I uh, quit the series and started college, uh, I let my hair grow, and it was, it was during the uh, late 60s, the early 70s, so you know the hippie time. And um, a lot of the other students uh, would say, "Oh, they look at me and they go, you look like that kid that was on last year." And I'd say, "Oh, a lot of people say that, you know, but it wasn't." So I would just kind of try to shut it on. Um, but uh, then I realized that um, they they were saying it because it was important and it meant something good to them. They they enjoyed what I did and they enjoyed growing up with Lassie. So um, then I embraced it and uh, have ever since. No one has ever come up to me and said that they hated Lassie. So <laughs> can't beat that. So in Lassie's Great Adventure, you uh, got stuck up in a tree. Were you scared of heights? And um, there were actually quite a few challenges. Um, like, was it tough to film? And was it scary for you? No, actually, pretty, pretty much the, uh, the things that we did um, were not really dangerous. You know, they, they may have, they may have looked dangerous. Um, and, and I did have um, a stunt double for certain things, uh, but as I got a little bit older in the series, um, I wanted to do my own stunts because, for one thing, it broke the boredom, and uh, you know every kid wants to you know, fall off trees, do, do different things, you know, have have some fun. Um, in this movie that we're showing tonight, Lassie's Great Adventure, uh, there was one scene where Lassie and I are in a raft that I built. Yeah. We had, uh, you know, gotten in a hot air balloon and we were, you know, hundreds of miles away from civilization. But being the good Boy Scout, I knew that uh, we had to go downstream because that's where we would find civilization. So Lassie and I, we built, I built this raft. And the thing was, they couldn't use stunt doubles for myself or for Lassie because they had to see our faces. And back then, um, they couldn't do uh, computer generated stuff, so it had to be us. And we could not rehearse it, it had to be done once. It was the only time we used multiple cameras. There's about six different cameras because it took a long time going down the river. And when the raft broke up, which it was supposed to do, Lassie and I were thrown into the rapids. And as I was going through the rapids, um, I got into like a, a, a whirlpool and it 
threw me under the water and I hit my chest on a, on a big rock and it knocked all the air out of me. And so I came up and I was gasping, I was screaming, but I was doing what the director told me to do, but he thought I was acting, but I wasn't acting. I was getting ready to go down for the third time. And um, they, uh, my stunt double at the time, uh, a man by the name of Whitey Hughes, once we passed the very last camera, he jumped into the river. And this was uh, in the Sierras in Northern California in wintertime. It was freezing. And so he jumped into the river, um, got underneath me and kind of catapulted me towards the shore. And a couple of the other crew members pulled me out. But then he almost ended up drowning. Now, the funny part is, for last year, they had two men in wetsuits to jump in and pull and save last year. For me, all they had was a rope strung across the river that I was supposed to grab. But since I was in such bad shape, I couldn't grab it and I was, I was going down the river. So that, that was the scariest and uh, da most dangerous thing for me. Normally things were uh, not quite work out. Oh, gosh, I really <laughs> and even though, um, because the water was so cold, under my clothes I had a wetsuit. Um, but I was wearing a heavy wool jacket, I was had, you know, jeans, I had um, heavy leather, high boots on, and of course everything, you know, filled with water, and then that was weighting me down, even though I had that wetsuit on, which gave me some buoyancy. Yeah. But uh, it was it was uh, it was, it was, it was a pretty scary thing. Yeah, that would be really scary for me. But um, so did last year give you a lot of love for animals, and how did that impact your future with animals? Well, I have always grown up with them. Um, we uh, my my sister had a horse, and I had a pony, and we had a goat, and my dad had pigeons, and you know, so uh, and we always had dogs and cats. So you know, I always loved animals. Um, one thing that I really, really learned from Rick Weatherwax, who was the owner and trainer and breeder of Lassie, was respect for the animals. Uh, he treated his animals um, like you would treat your child, and never saw him you know, be mean or do anything. I did see other trainers. <clears throat> that would have other dogs and other animals that would, you know, come and work with us because we work with everything from um, ostriches to alligators to you name it, we work with it. So I saw, you know, how other people dealt with animals. Some of them were not very nice people. The main thing I really learned from Rudd was that respect to it and it's, it's carried on with me, you know, for my entire life. One really interesting thing was, <coughs> we filmed nine months out of the year. One month out of that time, out of the year. Lassie and I would travel around the United States, uh, all the major cities, New York, Chicago, Dallas, the big towns, to promote the show. Well, what Rudd did, he insisted that if there was a children's concert in those towns, that Lassie and I would go visit the kids. Now, this was before there was um, service dogs. This was before there were therapy dogs. Well, I mean, they didn't even let dogs in hospitals back in those days. But they would let Tim and Lassie. Now, I was, you know, 9, 10, 11 years old. And I would go into a room where there might be some uh, young person that had polio, or they had um, been in a horrible automobile accident, or they had been um, scarred and burned in a fire. And they were watching us on TV every Sunday. And we would walk into that room. What it would do to, to the kids, I mean, it would make them like totally forget where they were and their problems. And that really carried on with me to where um, later on in life I got involved with um, an organization called Canine Companions for Independence. And we supply service dogs to people that have disabilities other than blindness. And I've been involved with them on the Board of Governors for over 22 years. And since the uh, 
um, the organization was founded, it was founded 35 years ago. Uh, we've placed throughout the United States over uh, 3,500 dogs free of charge. It costs it cost the person nothing, nothing, not a penny. Wow, that's good. So, um, the Lassie Show has all kinds of mer merchandise um, that fans could get. Did you get any of the Lassie Show items? You know, the, uh, the, when you're doing it every day, yeah. you, you don't think about saving a lot of stuff or you know bringing things home. <laughs> and the only one real item that I have was in one of my most favorite episodes, which was called uh, The Odyssey. It was a three-part episode where Lassie uh, got stuck in the back of a tractor-trailer rig and was taken halfway across the country. And, you know, for the first two episodes we were trying to find Lassie, we couldn't. So in the third episode, you know, I, I figured, okay, you know, Lassie's never coming home Lassie yet. Yeah. And so we have one scene where I'm burying Lassie's toys in a, in a special place where Lassie and I used to go. And one of the toys was a, a rubber um, cat that was a squeak toy. And uh, that I do have. And I also have uh, uh, some of my uh, uh, costumes, some of my outfits that I, that I wore. And my, one thing that I'm very proud of is my uh, whole outfit, my shirt, because Timmy always wore the same clothes. Yeah. My shirt, my jeans, and my okay. tennis shoes. Well, the um, Camel Soup is our sponsor, and so what they would do is, you know, kids would send in like five Camel Soup labels, mm -hmm. and then they could get the, uh, the Lassie ring, or and then we had uh, the Lassie fan club, which was a, a wallet. And either one of those items, if you can find those items today, are worth a lot of money. Yeah. So, um, Tim, uh, you wrote Timmy's um, In the Well and also interviewed some of the ch uh, child actors for your book. Did you find any sim similarities with child actors? Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, a lot of uh, my contemporaries were, you know, people that, um, you know, like Jay North, who was Dennis the Menace, um, the, the kids from uh, Stan and Barry Livingston from My Three Sons, uh, people from you know, Leave it to Beaver. Uh, from the Donna Reed show, because we're all, you know, pretty much the, the, the same age. And, um, you know, we, we hang around together and, and share a lot of the same experiences. Yeah. So what are your upcoming events? Well, I do uh, a lot of um, fundraising for no-kill animal shelters around the United States because like, it's very important. Um, and I do my um, my volunteer work as a board of governors for animals for independence. And then I also do a, a lot of uh, um, Hollywood memorabilia shows, um, Hollywood collectible shows. Uh, throughout the United States. And um, uh, actually now I've been doing some uh, voiceover work for a cartoon series called Elf Sparkle. It's a Christmas series. And I'm, uh, I'm the voice of Prancer the Reindeer and Elf Bitty. And I kind of had a lot of fun, but it's, 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 it's really kind of crazy. I mean, it's like, you know, once you're in the business, it's like you're always in the business. Yeah. So thank you so much for talking to me. Well, thank you so much.